Hi everyone, Nick Kratikos of Nick Seasonal Decor, and tonight you are watching me on Bodabra. So in case you're new here, we are live here on Bodabra each and every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and right now you can head to wreathcommunity.com, click the calendar tab, and add that event right to your phone so you get notified each and every time we're live. Uh, so I have a lot of bows to be making tonight. But before we get started, let's always thank our videographer tonight, so let's all be sure to thank Alex for recording. We're going to be using our large bodabra that you see here, as well as our bodabra wire. So without further ado, let's get started. I do have to share this video real quick, so let's share that. We're going to be using uh, both the gold and the silver wire, both products you can find available at nickseasonaldecor.com, along with your bodabra and your ribbons. So here we go. Uh, first time using the iPad, you guys. Dad picked mm. up this iPad. Um, a couple weeks ago now, right? This is like our, our first full week of using it. Hi, Brenda. Hey, Brenda. Nice Hi, to Pamela. see you. Okay. Let's see. Are we live? Hey, Lisa. Nice to see you, Lisa. Okay. All right. I will need your phone <laughs> to share this video. Okay. Um, but we're going to be using, I, I prefer the silver wire personally. Uh, I think it's more versatile and you can use it for a lot more projects and color schemes. I think silver just matches a lot better, but the gold is great for this time of year, which is Christmas time. So another thing I wanted to mention is that we are using a brand new mic system. Uh, and it actually came within 24 hours, right? So as much as we love supporting small businesses and whatnot, but you know, when we need a mic and we need it now, Amazon hooked us up, yes. right? So that was really nice that they came so, so quick. So let's start with our Hanukkah friends. So we have these two Hanukkah ribbons and I thought it would be pretty to teach you guys how to make a bow, uh, not for Christmas time. You get it? Yes. Awesome. Can you read comments from there? I can. Okay. Hey, Hi, Joyce. Valkis. Hey, Velkis. So we're going to start with our two and a half inch. This is a Star of David ribbon. Hi, Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. Yeah, let us know if you guys can hear us good tonight. Only dilemma is that it started downpouring three minutes ago. Yes. <laughs> so as soon as this video started, it looks like it's torrential rain outside. But I'm not complaining. You guys know we had a very dry summer all year long. And it's really nice to get a little rain every now and then, especially since it's been so dry. Hi, Melissa. She says, hi, everyone from Florida. I sure need this diversion right now. And we are thinking of you and hope that the weather down there is not too bad right now. I know that there was a hurricane, you were saying, Nick, down there. Yes. Yeah, so we spoke with a few customers this morning on the phone. And some of you guys, it's, uh, it seems like uh, you're just either going to miss it or it's going to hit you head on. So with this hurricane coming up, I don't remember the name of the hurricane, unfortunately. Uh, maybe somebody can fill me in. But, you know, we're definitely thinking of you guys because hurricanes are no joke. You know, that is probably the only thing that we struggle with here besides blizzards is bad hurricanes. We had Hurricane Sandy come by, gosh, many years ago now. Uh, but she did a lot of damage to our coast. Lots of houses actually went into the water right on Plum Island, which was not good, especially for those um, of our neighbors that were living in them, right? Yes. So we're going to do three layers of each. I see we're already over 100 people. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you enjoy watching me here on Bodabra, Ian is the name. Thank you, Kathy and Pam and Velkis. Ian, that's what it was. But if you enjoy watching me here, definitely be sure to hit that like uh, button. It helps me, you know, gauge to see how many of you guys are interested in learning more about bows. So this one goes on this side. Velkis loves the ribbons. Isn't it pretty? Hi, Brenda from San Antonio. Let's take this one out. Just re-squish it. All I'm doing is I'm just pinching it in the middle, and then we'll place that right back in. Hi, Donna. Hey, Donna. We have one more loop left. So this technique is known as a funky bow, and it's one of the easiest and one of my personal favorites because you can do so much with it. If you only have a yard of ribbon left over, well, you really can't do a traditional bow, right? But this technique, you can apply two, three, four, five different ribbons, whatever you have on hand. All of your leftovers can be put to use in something like this. So three loops of each. We created about four and a half inch loops with about six to eight inch tails, sometimes more, sometimes less. Hi, Julie. Hi, Cindy. Hey, you guys. Hi, Julie. Tammy's here, and she loves this ribbon. Me too. So although we don't celebrate Hanukkah, one thing that we're focusing on on our business this year is making sure that we design for 
every season and holiday. So we are pretty good about designing for different price points. Now I want to really be good with designing for, you know, different celebrations. Tina is watching from Australia. She says, love watching you guys and just love bows. Thank you, Tina. I appreciate that. Donna shared. Thank you, Donna. So now that we have our bow constructed, it ain't looking like much, but this is where we turn a basic bow into something beautiful. So before we fluff anything out, we are going to start by dovetailing. So to dovetail, you take your tail, fold it in half, and cut from the middle out towards the wired edge at an angle, and it just reveals that beautiful edge. Look at the difference. So I do this to all of my tails to make sure that they look as good as possible. Well, I don't want to say all of my tails, because uh, oftentimes we have people scream at us, right, mm -hmm. Alex? You forgot, you missed a tail or two. And for the longer tails, which I'm going to show you guys a little bit later on, you're going to understand why we don't dovetail those for the sake of curling them up. Valerie would love to win. Pam, Vernie would love to win. Lash is from the UK. Welcome, Lash. So dovetailing this side. I see we're at almost 200 viewers. Thank you guys for tuning in. Okay, last tail. Oh, I see one more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on this bow, we don't want to miss any. And there's only six loops, you guys. We used maybe a yard of each ribbon, if that. So a little goes a long way with this technique. Okay, throw out our scraps. And that's another goal of mine. Not a New Year's resolution, just a resolution, <laughs> is to start throwing things out as soon as I deal with it. I'm pretty bad about it, but we're getting there. Juanita would love to win. Hi, Rosario. Welcome, you guys. We're going to fluff it out now. And to fluff, I typically am not too concerned about separating the colors as much as I am getting the overall shape nice. So I like to kind of get that overall shape to my liking. And look at how pretty this bow looks. Very, very simple, very easy, and very inexpensive. You can make 10 of these bows using two rolls of ribbon, one of each color. Look at that. We have Gladys from North Dakota, and she would love to win some ribbon tonight. Hey, Gladys. I want to visit the Dakotas. I was actually looking at Mount Rushmore the other day, Alex. Really? I was. So here we have this bow. We're going to create another one. So let's do a present bow this time around. So this is leftover ribbon from a kit we designed. So it goes to show, you know, one or two rolls of ribbon, you're not going through all 10 yards for the vast majority of projects. You know, even if you have a couple feet low, uh, left over, it's still enough to do something with. Hey, Lisa. So never be, you know, afraid of saving those little partial rolls if you know in the future you're gonna use them, unlike me, uh, because you might find that perfect ribbon that, you know, you're gonna toss because you didn't have much left over and you end up putting it to use. So for this bow, I want to try that new technique that we've been doing and loving lately. So we're going to make it but big. So we're going to do about 12 inch loops or 12 inch tails. So see what we're doing here is just cutting a bunch of tails. Lisa would love to win. So we'll do about six of these. Couple more. Looks like it's pieced together here. We'll snip that off. Hey, Wilma. All right, one or two more, and then we'll cut a couple smaller ones too. So that is that for that. Um, that was funny. That is this is that for that. <laughs> we'll cut a few smaller ones now. So these only have to be about six to eight inches. We want to have some depth. So we'll cut anywhere from three to five of these. Hi, Joyce. Hey, Joyce. So how is everybody's weekend? How is it already Monday? I say it each week. I know, but it's true. <laughs> how does the time fly by? Lisa says she closed the pool yesterday. Oh, no. Yeah, we used to have a above-ground pool. And here in Massachusetts, the season is so, so little, right? So June, it would still be kind of chilly, right? Unless you had a mm. heater in your pool. Um, July, August, and about a week of September, if that, right? September has been chilly for us so far. Yeah, Lisa says too cold now. But then we have our friends in Florida and Texas and Louisiana um, that can be in a pool year round. But, you know, pick and choose your battles, you guys, because I've seen plenty of at home videos of pools with alligators in them. Have you seen those videos, yeah, Alex? I have. And those scare me. I saw one the other day of an alligator. Alligator, right? Alligators, yes. Um, I was going to say crocodile, but no, I think they're alligators. And one was in the sewer and some got in front of some guy's house. And he put the camera down there and all you heard was 
they don't roar, but they... Like gargle? Gr yeah, like growl, which was very scary. Yeah. You saw the whites of his eyes, and you saw just like the size of the thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like I always hear about, in the South, animals being in your toilet. Like oh, snakes popping snakes. up in your toilets, and you not knowing... That scares me. Yeah, no, it can get scary. <laughs> Worst thing we have around <laughs> us is mosquitoes. And even then, this year wasn't bad. We don't have too many snakes or... No, we have them, but not as We don't have many. venomous, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, there's only like one species that's venomous around us, thankfully. Uh, but those are hard to come by, right? Donna asked, Nick, what do you do when you find a piece together piece and you're in the middle of a traditional bow? I just work around it. You know, you can flip that that loop over and add enough loop so that you're not seeing it at all. Uh, so, you know, if you're able to cut it out, cut it out. You know, some of our ribbons have piece together marks. Um, I mean, pretty much every single company, right? And I've even seen some designer ribbons uh, be pieced together too. So you never truly know and it's just the luck of the draw and it seems like lately for me I, I always find those rolls for you guys. So I save you the hassle of finding them But you know, don't let it eat you up. It happens. Just flip that loop over or You know cut around it if possible. If not don't let it bother you So adding our smaller pieces now I see we have over 207 of you guys tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. It means a whole lot. Hi, Anne Hey, Anne. All right, we have all of our pieces in our Bodabra. So I want to show you guys what comes with the Bodabra when you order it from us. It comes with this wand, and you can feel like Harry Potter if you want, uh, or you can use it for this purpose of compressing your bows and your loops inside of your Bodabra. Truth be told, I don't like to sugarcoat things for you guys. This is awesome if you're doing really big bows, but other than that, what I typically do is that, you know? Mm. So unless you're having really thick ribbons or making tree toppers, it's just, you know... An extra tool that you that you get so Lisa the Hanukkah ribbon there was one that was one and a half and one is two and a half yes so, so we one have of the each blue and the white oops sorry and these were both left over from that kit as well Paula asked how many pieces are you using I missed that part uh, about six of the longer ones and it looks like we ended up with five of the smaller ones so uh, the more you have not necessarily the fuller it's gonna be because you're just kind of weaving them around, right? So to show you guys what I'm talking about is you're just pulling them from side to side. And I see almost 230 of you guys. You guys must be uh, reined in right now <laughs> like us. Lisa says she made bows all weekend. She loves her Bodabra. Awesome, Lisa. Hey, Max, thank you for taking my mind off the impeding doom of this hurricane headed for us. So, Max, I hope all goes well. Um, you know, it's always the scariest part, like the calm before the storm, right? So safe safe wishes for you guys hope nothing happens and hope you guys don't lose power uh, that's always our biggest issue is losing power during hurricanes look at that how pretty did that turn out something totally different totally unique julie says she really likes the size or the style bow isn't it pretty Anne asked is it a good idea to use a pipe cleaner to tie a bow together absolutely you can use a pipe cleaner um and we do use pipe cleaners but we do carry the wires as well so you know, it just, it just depends on what, what works best for you. So there is that bow. I see over two, almost 240 of you guys now. Thank you for tuning in. We are going to switch gears and use our gold wire now. I mean, gold is very pretty. So this wire looks, you know, very thin. Uh, but, you know, that was my first impression too. And I was like, oh, no way is this wire going to be sturdy enough. And it actually is. It's really, really strong and it holds its shape. Uh, beautifully and you can actually use it as accents I've taken ornaments you guys and I don't have one to show you guys we'll use this I take ornaments and I've actually wrapped ornaments around with it so it has like a little bit of texture which looks really cool maybe we'll show that here on Bodabra one of these days take your wire place it in the slit up top Kelly asked can you put tails on that style absolutely you could add some longer tails too hi Nina hey Nina I don't know if anybody else has designed this bow in the past um, I, I you know, in this day and age and in this world, I, you know, I have a hard time believing that everybody's the founder of everything. Uh, but if not, maybe we can create a cool name for it, right? I don't, I've never seen it before personally, but I don't want to put my name on it unless hmm. nobody else has seen it. So we're going to switch gears and make our wreath bow now. We are going to use this cobalt blue. So I'm going to show you guys how to do a traditional bow using our 7 8 inch. I think this blue is still in stock. 
Could be. Um, we might have some left. Might. The rest Not of the sure. colors, it's slim pickings, yeah. but that's okay. Cut a length of tails. We're gonna place them right inside. Let's cut another length for the heck of it. Hi, Marsha, watching from Michigan. Hey, Marsha. Paula says that is the prettiest bow. Thank you, Paula. Take your ribbon, place it inside. See that overhang? We have about half an inch. Always leave an overhang. That way you're not pulling it out when you're fluffing it or when you're tying it off. Whatever the case may be, you want that ribbon um, to be secured. Then we're going to just do a repetitive process over and over and over again, creating about three inch loops on repeat. The more loops you have, the more full your bow is going to be. And the wider your ribbon, the more full your bow is going to be as well. So I say anywhere from five to seven on either side will give you a nice full traditional bow. But you might not always want that. You guys know, sometimes you want it thinner, sometimes you want it thicker. Velkis loves the blue. Thank you, Velkis. So as a reminder, you guys, you can click to get notified by going to wreathcommunity.com. Under calendar, we have all of our Bodabra dates set. Diane asked where she can buy the bow maker. Yes. But Diane, you can actually get it at nickseasonaldecor.com along with the ribbons that we have right here as well. And the wires. So let's not I mean, forget the wires, those. sorry. <laughs> so I have five on this side. We got four on the other side. Let's cap it at five. So five each. Do you have to do five, Alex? Nope. Could you do six? You could do it as many as you want. Could you do even four on one side? You could. You could. So don't get too caught up in the numbers, you guys. It'll turn out pretty. And, and if you wanted more loops, you'll just know that for the next time. And I know that sounds silly and you guys will be like, well, I want to know now. <laughs> but the best thing you can do with bow making is give it a try. And once you kind of get accustomed to it, it'll become second nature and you'll know exactly how long to cut it. Almost 260 of you guys. Let's see if we can hit 300 live viewers tonight. Alex chose the most wonky 14-inch grapevine <laughs> uh, imaginable, which means we have better ones for you guys. Marsha asks, is the blue ribbon wired? And yes, it is. It is. I love the narrow ribbons. Who else is a fan of the narrow ribbons? Hi, Dory. Hey, Dory. A little snip, snip. Hi, Bob. Watching Liz. NASA shot that asteroid. Oh, I didn't see that. I know. So we're going to take our bow and we're going to place it in the lower left hand corner. So this is going to be a great example to show you guys that truthfully, it doesn't make a difference what your grapevine looks like. Uh, obviously, if we all can have them absolutely perfect, we would choose to do so. But it is a natural product and it should be treated as such. No two grapevines are the same in thickness and shape, you know, all of those things. And that is one of the reasons I love grapevines so much, is that they all look different. Lisa loves the 7 eighths. I do too, Lisa. Hey, Carol. Carol loves narrow ribbon too. Marcia says, I made my first wreath and bow today all by hand. It wasn't bad, but I think I need a Bodabra. Ooh, Marcia, let us see how your bow turned out. But Bodabra does make life a lot easier. So we teach how to make hand bows I mean, almost daily, right? Uh, but we have lots of customers, followers, and members that struggle with hand bows. You know, whether they just haven't gotten the, you know, the ability, which I believe everybody has the ability to make a bow. But uh, another issue too is that we have a lot of members that have carpal tunnel and arthritis. And in those cases, it doesn't really make a huge difference if you can make it by hand or not, because your hands will hurt and you'll become um in pain which is definitely what we don't want so by using the bodabra it makes life a lot easier so we're going to take some of this greenery and i thought yellow with that blue contrast would look really pretty this is going to be pretty Al. callie loves the ribbon oh, i didn't even show you guys the bow well you get the gist of it <laughs> So I didn't do anything with the tails yet, and I usually save it to the end. Um, I used to be the type of person to fluff during every step along the way. And what I have realized is that it's not that it's wasted effort, but you're going to have to redo it anyway. So it depends on the way you look at it. So we're just going to save ourselves the hassle of doing it each step along the way and give it with the tails a good fluff a little bit later on. Okay, so we're going to take some of this greenery now, work it around. Lisa asked what this greenery is. Uh, just a greenery. <laughs> um, just one with a slight yellow hue to it. 
So another thing too, and this is something we've mentioned before in our videos, is when it comes to working in flowers, you know, we can treat our greenery as such. So by this having a little bit of yellow, I mean, it looks like flowers to me, filler flowers. So you don't have to work in larger blooms in every design. And in some designs, I actually think it looks better without. A couple more pieces of this. So see how I just created kind of like a collar all the way around? We have a couple more pieces. Looks like cedar. It could be a cedar, it could be a juniper. Uh, this is just a generic foliage. There we go. And the tags never say the, the type, does it? <laughs> so it's kind of like a guessing game. All right, a little bit of this greenery. Now what we can do is work in some flowers. So we have some pretty blue flowers to work in today. Look at these. I love those. Brenda asked, Nick, do you keep your skillet on high? Uh, no, I do not. Great question. I keep it, I mean, the best way to describe it is that it's hot, but in terms of glue, it's lukewarm, right? Yeah. So it will get you and you could burn, but it's not going to be like that dripping mess if you have it on high temp. So the, the colder you can keep your glue, in all honesty, the better. I know the general rule is, uh, you know, you want high temp glue sticks so that they melt at a burnt, you know, higher temp or whatever the case may be. I prefer my glue, uh, glue. <laughs> I prefer my glue a little bit colder for safety reasons. Because think about it, you guys, how miserable will that be when I burn myself bad? Knock on wood, it hasn't happened in a long time, but it has happened in the past. And you know, still have to design. I can't think of honestly anything more miserable <laughs> than that. Been there, done that, do not want to do that again. Lisa, we do not sell that greenery currently. We do not, no. Hi, so, Brenda. Hey, Brenda. So all I'm doing with our tails is I'm just rolling them up a little bit. I think that gives such visual interest when you curl them and tweak them, uh, and it really creates for a powerful impact. So here we have on this wreath a few flowers, a little bit of greenery, 14 inch grapevine and a little bit of this inexpensive ribbon. So this ribbon was 550 for 20 yards, grapevine 575. You're looking at 10 to $15 to construct this wreath and think of what a great gift that will be. So Christmas is coming, now's the time to start designing. If you have friends or family that love the color blue, work in blue. If they love red, work in red. Uh, you can totally add that personal touch without really making it complicated for yourself. And if you don't wanna go shopping, this is a great gift. Hi, Lucy from San Antonio, Texas. She's a newbie wreath maker. Hey, Lucy, nice to have you and welcome to the community. Uh, this community, not to brag or anything, but this community is one of the absolute best communities here on Facebook and in the world, I'd say. What do you think, Alex? The wreath making community? Yes. Doesn't it rock? It does. Actually, it's pretty troublesome because <laughs> we have so many awesome people in the community that they always create awesome designs and you know, you just gather so much inspiration that you're kind of like, oh, you know, <laughs> now I have to go create another wreath or else I can't sleep. So. Hi, Marilyn. Hey, Marilyn. Lisa says she's looking to do a wreath with pumpkins. Ooh, awesome. Hi, Danielle. Hey, Danielle. And don't forget, you guys, both Bodabra and Nick's Seasonal Decor have free crafting groups. Uh, you can join the Bodabra Fan Gallery and the Nick's Seasonal Decor Crafting Community. Both are great added inspiration uh, from all sorts of designers. So if you are looking for more inspiration, those groups are the way to go. Leanne says, fabulous community, very supportive. I agree. Renee loves this look. How pretty is that? Super simple, super inexpensive, and super, super pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that wreath. Let's switch gears and make another bow. I want to show you guys one more bow at least. So we got to get it rocking and rolling. Cut a length of wire. Work it inside. Tuck it under. And let's do one more geared for fall. Uh, so this was a part of the bargain box. And it's a really pretty bittersweet, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I think this works from, I mean, honestly, August 1st through Thanksgiving. That's how pretty it is. So for this bow, let's, let's see. How do we want to do it? Uh, there's so many different bows out there. That's why it's so, so difficult. But let's do, let's do a hybrid bow. 
let's start with a tail coming back in. Thank you, Rosario. She says my first wreath was beautiful. Your well, first, your first my wreath the other day. Yeah, <laughs> I know it did Thank turn out really you. pretty. So we'll do a bunch of pieces that are two loops like that. Hi, Jane, watching from Vermont. Hey, nice to see you. Alex is dying to go back to Vermont. I know. I do want to go back. Me and Nick went on a trip last year. Just for the weekend, we actually took a trip up to Burlington, Vermont. Is that how little we were there? Yeah, we were there for, I think, two days. Two nights. Huh. It was very cold, too. I remember being very cold and rainy when we went it to It was that March, I want to say. Ma March or April. One of those months. Yes. So what I'm doing with this bow, you guys, is I'm placing a length of tails, and then we're kind of doing a funky bow pattern where we're creating a loop, but instead of just creating that loop and cutting it off, we're pinching it after the first loop, working in our second loop, and then snipping it off. So we have, for every loop, or for every two loops, we have two tails, versus for every loop, we have uh, two. So less tails, more loops on this kind of bow. And Hi, it's just Judy. a different look. Hey, Judy. So by switching up, you know, such subtle things, it can really make a huge difference. And if you need kind of like a creative spurt where you're kind of struggling to be creative and think outside the box, sometimes such minuscule changes can change the entire look and feel of your design. So don't be afraid to experiment. Sometimes it works and sometimes it won't. <laughs> but you can't be afraid of the times it doesn't. Uh, Bob said he missed my wreath. Bob! Um, I did it on a Facebook Live. The What day did I do it, Your Nick, birthday. actually? September, oh, it was my birthday. Yeah. September 14th. I don't we remember did it what day birthday. that yeah, was. We did. Was it Wednesday? Uh, I think it Thursday? was a Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday. I think Wednesday. Alex has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so let's fluff this out. Like I said, more loops to tail ratio. And it just creates a different look. And there's nothing wrong with mixing it up. Julie says, perfect ribbon for fall. I like it. I know. So unfortunately, we ran out. Uh, they Well, not ran out, but they were exclusive to bargain boxes, which we'll have more of. So that is another bow. Let's do one more. We have time for one more, and we might as well do it. So let's cut a length of wire. Ooh, and we have our winner tonight. Ooh, who's our lucky winner? Congratulations to Grace Tyner Davis from North Carolina. Congratulations, Grace. You have won yourself a roll of ribbon. Yes, you did. Free so roll of ribbon. you can go ahead and send Bo Dabra a message right here directly on Facebook, and they'll get you all set up with your winning roll. Congratulations. And don't forget, you guys, Bo Dabra gives away a roll of ribbon each and every Monday uh, when we're live. So stick around, because at the very end, they always announce one lucky winner. Melissa says, Nick, if you make four two-loop bows, I call it a crazy eight bow. Ooh, crazy eight. That's one of my favorite games. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing a traditional bow now without the tails. So this right here, I think would look great in a duck wreath for some crazy reason. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen those um, the duck enhancements, where it's kind of like, like the elf bottoms that we have or the bunny bottoms but it's just a, a little like a, beak? Like, a, like a little yellow duck you've never seen them i'll show no. you <laughs> like the legs or... um like the whole body with the little oh. face it's just like a, it's like a stuffed animal oh. but for some reason i feel like we have to make one now so that's three loops on each side let's do four and that's it so something like this would be perfect for um, any kind of present. And I feel like Christmas isn't the only time for gifts. So, you know, bridal showers, baby showers. Lisa says a duck wreath. Did he say duck? Yes, I did. I'll show you. I'll post a picture for you guys so you know what I'm talking about. All right. So we're going to tie this from behind. Tie it. I always say three times because if it's... You know, if it gives out on the first, um, you know, that's on shame on you. If it gives out on the second, well, you could have done one more to be safe. And if it gives out on three ties, then it was meant to be. That's the way I look at it, at least. So see how we have a little leftover in the middle? We don't need that much. So a half an inch. 
just to make sure it's not going anywhere. And then we have a perfect bow that would look great right on top of a present. And to secure it to the present, I always just take a little dab of hot glue and stick it right to the wrapping paper. That way, if they wanna save it, they can just rip it right off. So that is going to do tonight's live. Thank you all so very much for joining us tonight. We are live here on Bodabra each and every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. I am Nick Kratikos of Nick's Seasonal Decor. We have Alex behind the camera. And let me know which of these bows is your favorite. I think for me, I love the simplicity of that wreath. So I'm going to go with that. Close second would be this one for me. You too? Yeah, I like the present one. So, me too. So thank you guys again, and I will see you all next Monday. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Dory. And thank you, Joe, for being with us and having us as a guest. Bye, everyone. Good night, everyone.